Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about melodic structures. So I've been talking about these for uh, these kinds of things um, on the channel. Uh, probably pretty pretty much aligned with uh, with the um, when the member area uh, started. Um, and I've been pretty excited about just uh, sharing this uh, information in general. Um, so today we're going to talk about that, um, and we're going to talk about some different ways of uh, uh, utilizing them, talk about what they are, we'll do a little review, and then, um, and then go from go from there. And uh, so I'm going to take a little bit of a solo to play us on and uh, uh, see if I can place in a few of these uh, kind of melodic structures and things as I as I go along. So this is... Uh, Days of Wine and Roses, and uh, so we'll get, get going here to start us out. Make sure everything is lined up here properly. And um, so we'll begin with with this. Hopefully everything's kind of in line here. We'll see. <laughs> So um, let's talk a little bit about this whole idea of uh, melodic structures and um, work from there. So um, just in general, um, you know, stepping aside from our topic for, for a moment, um, taking a four note grouping and having um, an awareness or have a, having an idea of four notes to play on a particular chord, that could be... Um, the chord tones for that particular chord, or it could be something that kind of contrasts with those chord tones. Um, so the uh, melodic structures kind of fall into that 
that sort of idea uh, of taking uh, four tones and and really trying to apply them over um, over a chord, uh, a given chord, and then stringing together uh, melody. Okay, so um, so we'll start out by thinking about. Um, some of those root notes of tone. So let's say we have a, a F chord. Okay, so there we have this melodic structure. We have the F major triad, and then we have um, some stepwise motion sort of sitting in between the root note and the uh, third. So, right, and that can to be your melodic material maybe to play on that chord change and then you can play um, different uh, let's say inversions of that so okay so you're taking um, kind of a four note group and then you can also work on on doing them in different orders so if you had a grouping like like this they might say something like that. So some of the advantages of of this is uh, approach is that um, you're going to build in this uh, interval of a fourth. You get the whole steps, get um, third. Um, but once you start moving into the um, inversions of it, you can see here we have a perfect fourth. All right, so that, that particular combination can work well for the um, dominant seven, major seven. Um, but it can also, we can also build off of different parts of this, of the, of a particular chord with that particular shape. So we'll get into that later. That's kind of the main thing we're going to try to work out. So if you have a dominant seven, chord with a flat nine, you can just maybe alter that a little bit, so flat the, the nine there, so then you get a tone that kind of corresponds with that. Okay, and then uh, let's say you have, a, um, let's take, take a look at some other chords in this tune, um, so say, say A minor, okay, so we could uh, play the um, um, minor version of the melodic structure. What's kind of interesting about this too is that um, if you combine the, the minor Right, and then the major melodic structure, so A minor melodic structure, C major melodic structure. Collectively, you get five notes, so it's it's kind of tied in with a pentatonic scale, and it has gives that sort of impression and that sound. All right, but just to kind of take that little little closer look at that, we have A minor. Okay, so we have the minor triad, and then we have this tone in between the flat third and the fifth of that. Okay. All right, so those are melodic structures. And then let's say we have a, let's say we have a chord change uh, in this tune. We have a chord, we have a chord uh, change from uh, the E minor seven flat five to the A seven flat nine. So that might be a good spot to use minor melodic structure, but you flat, flat the five in order to uh, have sort of compatibility with that sound of the flat five. So even with those, uh, those two melodic structures, the major and the minor, you adapt them a little bit for some of those, those chords. So you have four uh, melodic structures and their inversions and their iterations. Um, and so you can work at a lot of material um, through uh, the use of those. All right. 
So, um, so let's slow it down a little bit and, um, um, all right. So, um, we'll, we'll take it at a slower tempo here. I'm going to, um, check the live stream for any question or questions or comments. All right. And then, uh, let's take it a little slower and I'm going to really kind of deliberately, um, work at outlining some of those, uh, melodic structures okay so if you're checking this out on the podcast there is a uh, video version for uh, members of the youtube channel uh, youtube.com forward slash fretprints uh, you can also visit fretprints.com all right so let's um, play a little bit so here i'm going over kind of a specific concept uh, so i'm play slower and it's going to sound a little uh, Maybe kind of contrived, but um, I'm going to uh, uh, make an effort to demonstrate sort of the sounds of some of those melodic structures. a little bit more about um, um, taking this um, melodic structure here and, and, and using it in various ways. Um, so let's say we have a moment, moment on F. So we might play a C melodic structure on the F. Okay. 
And so what we've done is gone, gone up a perfect fifth from the root note, and we've chosen that spot to to um, to start a new melodic structure. And what, when the starting spot for this is to, or a starting place, once you find that note, to go up a fifth from the root, is to see or hear what um, what kind of fits with the with that chord in the most consonant way before you start maybe doing more dissonant things if you want to. But um, but here we would have the fifth of the chord, the six, the seven, and the nine. Okay, so we get two chord tones from the C major, and then we get two that are non chord tones. So that's a good spot to start out with with that. Now, if you do that with minor, so let's check this out. Um, you might try uh, playing a minor melodic structure. So again, just to uh, kind of back up, when we started out, we uh, played from the root note. Uh, melodic structure. And now we're talking about you're starting on the fifth, okay, and playing a melodic structure up from there. So, but on the same chord. Okay. All right. Okay. And so it's going to give a different impression on the, on the chord because you, you might say, okay, well, if I'm playing G minor. Maybe I'll play this, right? But if you play um, play that, that's kind of strictly with the um, chord tones. But if you play uh, this D minor melodic structure, you get this nine in here, so you get a little dissonance happening uh, with it. Okay, so we go up up a fifth and play something from from that that tone out to there. All right. All right, so let's change it up here a little bit. Um, let's see about, uh, oh, let's take, take Days of Wine and Roses. And um, let's see, well, uh, well uh, let's stick with this kind of similar kind of groove here. Uh, from uh, what we did a little bit yesterday. Um, so I'm going to kind of give us a bossa nova kind of sound. Oh, I just realized something. Okay. All right, that's probably going to be okay. All right, um, so I'll play a little bit on, on this. Um, and maybe I'll open it up a little bit, maybe a little, a little faster, but See if we can kind of stick a little bit with uh, some of these concepts. So you might even want to get a lead sheet and follow along and um, kind of think a little bit about uh, some of these uh, melodic structures as we play here. Thank you. 
about this <clears throat> we have this this concept of maybe playing and using the circle of fists and you can go um up really pretty far i mean you can go all the way around if you want to um but playing with the um the fifth and then maybe from the second right so for example say so we have f major so this is an f major nine chord uh, we could play F major melodic structure. We could play C major. Um, now we, here we get into some choices. So we we could have G minor melodic structure, or maybe even uh, G major melodic structure, depending on what kind of color you're going for. Now the E flat might be a little bit more of a clearer. Uh, idea there so we have the, the E flat dominant seven so E flat melodic structure okay. so we could have uh, let's say uh, G or B flat minor so B flat minor melodic structure there on top of that and then maybe the D or F let's say F major melodic structure on that. Okay, and you can try to even cycle through a circle of fifths if you want, or uh, move around. I think I did that at some point. The uh, B minor 7 flat 5, so here's a choice you could, you could work on, which I think I played. Uh, F melodic structure on that. Flat five there. Okay, so to review here, we have uh, melodic structures. We have um, basically a triad with with an added um, color. That's one way to look at it. Um, or 
you could even think of it as a um, pentatonic scale that's, that's missing one. Right? So we have four notes, so it just sits in between, um, in general, kind of a triad and a pentatonic. Right? So um, let's do a little playing on a, on a blues here, see how this um, sounds for us on on this one. I think I'm just gonna basically play right kind of through it. Um, so this is one of our tunes from uh, for this month, a blues tune. Okay, so we're trying um, to work out three three different um, kind of types of tunes and stuff. All right. Okay, so let's begin again with all that. Let's play, take it up a little bit. Have some fun with it. See, I'll put the changes in there. So for different types of tunes and different, um, um, let's say, if, if, if chord changes are changing really fairly rapidly, 
uh, like in this tune, or maybe a tune like um, Giant Steps, which is a fast tempo and uh, tonalities are moving uh, quickly, um, then you might want to stick to to outlining more of the changes uh, a little bit more. But of course, that's all up to the improviser. But um, um, so there are a couple moments where I made an effort to stretch out a little bit, but um, but kind of sticking with it um, and with those changes helps to outline what the uh, what the chords are. So these uh, melodic structures really do help with um, with outlining chord changes and um, keeping everything um, kind of in some kind of order um, or some kind of structure. So several things to um, just kind of think about. We want to, um, of course, take these melodic structures and internalize them, and then hear them on different uh, uh, type types of chord sounds. So you might start with, um, you know, the root note, and then also the um, um, the fifth as as good spots to both of those will outline the chords pretty pretty well so let's say we have we have f f major so we'll say okay e minor a7 so i play, I play something like that the flat b flat there So you can string these things together so that that was kind of going through this soul part and landing back on the on the G, on the B flat right and play whatever kind of melodic structure you want to do right so some things will you know kind of lead in an interesting direction so you have uh, Say we have this B flat minor going to this E flat seven or nine in this case uh, I'm playing there, but um, you say okay, how about F minor, and then that's gonna lead you into this uh, tone, right? So so that works pretty well. So I'm playing B flat minor chord, or that's what the chord is that's being played and then playing F minor uh, melodic structure and then see if we can aim at that flat 7 of the E flat right? and then you can kind of ask yourself well does that uh, connect to another melodic structure that you could maybe work from so um, let's say um, maybe the B flat melodic structure so so you can have develop a line like uh, right and then that can land on your next thing so it's kind of stringing along uh, these melodies and things it's pretty um, it's a pretty powerful tool um, and you know when you when you take take a solo you might you know use different like I said, tools using that word. So use different tools for um, really just to kind of create variety and do different things at different times. Um, all right, so um, let's take one more tune, play a little bit. Um, this is our third tune. This is our um, Brazilian tune. Um, or a Latin tune for the uh, a lot of a lot of them do happen to be um, Brazilian, of course. Um, so let's play a little of this, and um, again, we'll think about those melodic structures. And of course, you know, a slower tune. If you're less familiar uh, with it, gives gives a good opportunity to. Work that out, and also um, just just from um, playing it here, you might be able to more clearly hear 
what um what's going on with that so um all right so i'm gonna play a little bit of that on this and um again thinking about these melodic structures on these on these changes here So, um, thanks for checking out this um, live stream and uh, again, talking about melodic structures here. Um, and um, the two basic types, and then altering those, and then placing them around in um, different maybe parts of, of the uh, whatever uh, chord you're, you're playing. So, those are quite a few um, things to take away on this. So in the key of C, just to review, if we have key of C, and we can have a C, D, E, G as a melodic structure, we can play those. Um, same notes in different uh, orders, different inversions. <clears throat> And then we can play different iterations of any one of those. So, um, so if your if your inversion is that, then you might mix them up. Different uh, configurations, you might say. And then, uh, um, so those are those elements. So you have the basic uh, shapes themselves. That's the major one. If you had minor. structure that we see minor here you get the uh, root flat three four five okay all right and so um and so the inversions the iterations and then starting them basically on different parts of the uh, of, a, of a particular scale All right, so I'll do a little more playing here um, to finish this out. Make sure I get this backing track here, looping in the right place, and with the loop turned on. All right, uh, so this has been a bit, big project, um, kind of you know, figuring all this out for a while, and uh, yeah, it's going pretty well, but a couple. And a couple snags here and there, but uh, 
but this will give us kind of a context to for for our learning on these um, on these tunes and things. So we'll take it a little bit up and um, so listen for some of those uh, melodic structures, and I might play just fairly freely as well. But I will. Uh, make an effort to mix things, mix things in, so. Thank you. 
All right, everybody. Well, thanks again for watching and listening. We all enjoy this um, talk. So um, I'll be back with another talk uh, tomorrow. And uh, of course, this live stream uh, video is available for replay and uh, podcast anytime you want to listen. All right, I'll see you all in the next one.